Okay, um, let's get started. Uh, so I, I like to spend a little bit time to talk about the midterm first though. So uh, some of you guys did quite well, actually, uh, and some of you don't do as well. Um, but I guess I, first of all, I guess I would try to manage the expectation. Um, it's only 20%, don't worry too much about that. Uh, the bad one, uh, you guys have worked for those are like, doing quite well and for those who are not doing bad as well, like it's about like 10% off like the entire, uh, over like 100% and then like, um, and also like remember that we have this participation credit. So if you did participate like in class like over the entire semester, so like, you should be more than enough to cover the loss any sub and potential loss from this midterm. And um, so yeah, you, you most likely still manage to get an A even though like you don't do quite well for this midterm. But I guess the important part is I like, um, try to make sure you understand what uh, the solution of this midterm because I, I'll say like the question I asked here is quite, um, uh, if you understand the uh, basic concept here is like quite simple, like for the stuff I, I asked here. So uh, so therefore I, I still like to spend like maybe like 20, 30 minutes, like maybe 20 minutes to quickly go through this midterm here. So even though I already give you the solution, and um, <clears throat> so for the first one, it's just doing a linear regression. I guess it's very simple. You already did the homework. So all of you are doing fine for that. I guess I guess just always skip that. So for the second one, it's like just a question for SVM. Is I really cover a question like for your understanding of SVM? So, I, so we are asking like for a hard margin here. I, I explicitly highlight that hard margin. So. So for hard margin SVM, like the, the, the gap there, okay, if you want to, you want to maximize the gap for SVM, right? So the gap should not include any data points. So therefore like the biggest gap you can do is I like this, right? So, so uh, and so therefore like to min, min, maximize the margin will be like this. So therefore the, the uh, decision boundary simply will be the uh, Y between the two boundary margin here so therefore this will be the decision boundary and the support vectors are basically the data point that is hitting the boundary for the hard margin case so it'd be like this one this one and this one so know that if i for the soft so if, if i am asking for soft margin then i may have some data points fall inside that uh this margin here and those will be the will be uh will be uh a support vector as well so, but in this case, because this hard margin is simple, so uh, basically it'll be just like this. So, um, so I want to make sure you guys are, you know, know this because I it's surprise. Uh, it's maybe like because we don't spend too much time like on SVM afterward. But um, this is an important like basic concept like about SVM. So like you should you should know that like. Uh, uh, on top of your head, basically. So, okay, this is a, a simple second question here. For the third question, I guess most of you guys have a little bit trouble like for the second part, uh, but it's really, it's like want to test you like how much you actually understand the bad pop besides uh, just calling, uh, I, don't, I don't know, calling, not even calling, right? Because I uh, let the package to do the auto grad. Of course, like, we all we know, everyone knows that like bad pop is nothing but just train all the way. So here, like you say, the first one is very simple. Just want to uh, actually say like, keep away basically. So y is equal to w x or y is w x will be just like this multiplied by this way. So that will be I guess it's one five something like that if I remember correctly. Um, yeah, I think I can just open my solution as well. Then I I don't. Um, yeah, five one actually it's not one five five one. Um, so and for the second one here, we want to compute the the uh, 
basically the gradient uh, with respect to W, the L is like the final loss, or less the loss is like that. So as you can see, like we go through the lateral, like go through like eventually back pop to here, we have the gradient information back pop back is like uh, parcel L, parcel Y is equal to this guy here. Then parcel L, parcel W, of course, if we just like weigh it down, like parcel L, parcel W should be like, uh, parcel L, parcel Y, multiplied by parcel bar, uh, Y, uh, sorry, parcel L, yeah, parcel, yeah, that, parcel Y, parcel W, right? So everyone knows to write down this, but the point is like, if you actually have some values, do you actually know like what does this mean here? That's this, this part is actually test you, your understanding, right? Do you know what this actually do? So, um, um, I, I have a uh, parcel L, parcel Y, of course, it's just, um, um, it's given here, but parcel Y, parcel W, the dimension of parcel Y, parcel W, um, it's really, uh, the, the number of elements should be the number of elements for the input multiplied by the number of elements for the output. Um, so actually, if I draw it like cover in a two, a three dimensional way, uh, so each of these layers is like parcel Y1, parcel W. This is a parcel Y2, parcel W. And this portal here is really like, this is, Okay, this doesn't draw that as well. This is like parcel L, parcel Y. This border is really like uh, in the border of like these two here. So I have this element multiplied by this layer here times this element multiplied by this layer here. So all uh, therefore is equal to parcel L, parcel Y1, parcel Y1, parcel W. Let's have parcel L, parcel Y2, parcel Y2, parcel W. And um, parcel L, parcel Y1 will be just one, right? So this one is just one. And parcel L, parcel Y2 is just minus one. This one is minus one. And for parcel Y1, parcel W, I have, um, Y1 is equal to uh, W, okay, let, let, let me wait down. Y, y, I have Y is equal to Y1 and Y2, eh? is equal to W here times X, X here, eh? times X here, X1, X2, X3 here. So I have W, let's say W1 is like the first row here. So this I call it W1 here, and this is W2 here. So then parcel Y1 in terms of W, if I look at like Y1 here, Y1 is equal to W1 or, or maybe I just write it like W1, 1, X1 plus W1, 2, X2 plus W1, 3, X3, right? And uh, so if I, yeah, let, let, let me move to here. I need to, I, I, can I help? Yeah, it's okay. So this, this is Y1, basically Y1 is equal to this guy here. Okay, let me write Y1 is equal to this guy here. So then parcel Y1, parcel W is actually, Okay, I really asked the question that is just to see if you guys are actually following. So what's the dimension of this guy? Parcel Y1, parcel W, dimension of like parcel Y1, parcel W.
Mm, be careful about all that. Okay, know that like, what 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 does that mean really? This is really meaning that like when y one is a scalar, what it means is I just parcel y one over parcel each of these element like parcel w one one, parcel y one parcel w one two, parcel y one parcel w one two. Uh, sorry, like this is no, this is not one two. This is two one, and this is parcel y one parcel w one two, parcel y one parcel w two two, parcel y one w w one three, parcel y one parcel w two three. Right? That that's that's actually the definition of that. And if you have like, let's say it's y is not scalar, then actually you have layers, in the sense that I I if I, if I have like parcel y, that's why I have this parcel y, parcel w, you see like I actually has a three dimensional structure here because I, this one is actually parcel y1, parcel, parcel w itself is say a two by three here. And this is say another one, parcel y2, parcel w, he say it's also two by three here. So therefore the entire parcel y, parcel w is actually two by two by three by the way. So anyway, but this one here, yeah, so therefore it's like two by three. So you see like, okay, uh, because y1 is equal to this guy, right? So I take the partial derivative with back to like w11, w12, w13 here. So what I get here would be simply, so therefore like this one, it be simply equal to um, x1, it's one one here x1, x2, and x3, and this is a zero, zero, zero. So meaning that like I will have like this guy is like x1, x2, x3, zero, zero, zero. And similarly, this one will be like zero, 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 x1, x2, x3. So therefore like parcel L, parcel W, let me erase here. here. Um, It's like x1, x2, x3. I have this one here, this I have minus one here, minus x1, x2, minus x3, something like that. Yeah. And okay, that's for the B part here. So for the C part, like then that, that is actually very easy. Right? Um if you, you know the B part, actually I will give you point if you um if you compute something for this guy and you illustrate that like this is a W is I just doing gradient descent, uh, but um, yeah, basically I, I I will give you point when I if you roll this, but uh, yeah, but many of you like just stop here like when you're stuck you don't try to do this, but anyway, so for the for and then in this case is we just zero point one here and this yeah it's just computer here it's very simple. So question four and five is just check like your understanding of like, uh, actual laterals, uh, what the layers actually means really. So if I had start with an input like 24 by 24 by three here, and uh, if I have like first a time filter, so three by three, like I have a CNN to the three by three with like pattern one, stride one. So then like, I, I really have start with like a three dimensional Block here, like twenty four by twenty four by three here. Right? So if I I have like a filter, 
this filter is actually is something like doing dot product with, like with this column here over for the entire, entire image and also I have some pattern here so for each of the filter each of the filter we get a layer the layer will be still because of the pattern on the stride here I will get back the layer is also 24 by 24 so um and of course I, I have like 10 filters of them so therefore I have 10 layers here so therefore like the output dimension will be 10 by 24 by 24 and if you count the number of parameters for each of the filter for each of the layer the filter size will be 3 by 3 by 3 right so this is a filter size here and for for kind of accurate I don't mind if you, you skip that but it's for more accurate you can you can add the bias as well so each of filters will be like this size and I have 10 filters so therefore it should be like equal to 10 times 3 by 3 times 1 uh, plus 1 something like so make sure I yeah and then I for value um value doesn't change your output dimension right so again I I I as long as I I, I would just say uh, I mean I won't accumulate your error for example if you made something wrong here and you manage to say like this dimension is the same as this dimension I will give you a point for that um, and know that the number of parameters are in the value layer it's, it's just doing like a, a thresholding right so there should be no parameters say, for that module there so therefore it's just zero parameters and for average polling so what it does is you look at the stride is four so therefore every time we skip by four and we're not doing no padding so then it's like basically I have again I, this like output like three-dimensional block here and then I for every four by four I would just say take an average of that way so that, therefore like I will uh, the output dimension should be like 10 by 6 by 6 and then I the number of parameters again I actually that's no parameter I just do an average right so no parameter there and then I uh, I have three filters of one by one one by one will be very similar to the first case but uh, my filter size is one, one by one just one by one here and um, there's no low padding no stride the dimension will be still be the same like 24 by 24 and but the lump of layers now will become three way so it'll be like three by 24 by 24 oh sorry not 24 yeah six three by six by six because the early layer is a and in terms of number parameters here I have um what for each of the filter I have like 10 parameters here and I have one bias as well so it's 10 plus 1 for each of the filter and three filters so it's 3 times 10 plus 1 and for mass polling it's like similar to the average polling uh, I have tried 5 D, so I, I down sample even more would be like 3 by 2 by 2 and again I similar to like um, average polling that's no parameters so it be zero here so for this one uh, it's just a uh, similar to the first one the, the four questions but we'll try to um, compute precisely the value as well and also like um, here I want to test whether you guys know what is transpose convolution so um, I, I made these numbers up arbitrarily it turns out these numbers is a little bit too nice so if I do a one two one strike two so what it does like look that like I do a padding one first so then like we should start with the padding so I have one one two one minus two uh, four eight so I should pad by seal on both sides so I have seal, mi seal one minus two four minus eight seal then uh, I have a convolution of one two one and strike two so I should start with this one here hey, hey, one two one so one two one I get zero here basically and then I strike two I should move two steps here so 
the next one, uh, this one, I won't do that. I won't compute this one. So the next one, I should compute like this guy here, uh, multiplied by one, two, one, like uh, in the part of it, one, two, one here. So it should give me zero as well, I think. Um, is that, where is that? Uh, no, no, it's not zero here, yeah. So it's like uh, minus a plus a minus two here, so it's minus two here, yes. And then I should skip two again. I, if I skip two, like, I, I cannot go further. So therefore, like, it's already the output. I still I minus two. Still minus two here. If I go for a loop here, like you just say, this will set to zero, right? So it becomes zero, zero. So, and then I, if I do the transpose convolution, I like having one strike two, what it does is I, so first I, I have a filter again, it's a one to one here. So I have the zero first zero. So for the first zero, I get like one to one here, count, count like just one to one scale by zero, that just zero, zero, zero. Right? So I have zero, zero, zero here. And then I, I have this one also like inner part of it, one to one, but I've tried to, so, so I should skip by two here. So I have like add another zero, zero, zero here. So therefore I should get like uh, zero, 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 zero. But know that I have a padding one, so I should like truncate like one on both sides. So therefore I should get like zero, zero, zero. So, okay, that, that's it. Um, as I said like this, um, yeah, if you know what you're doing, like it should be like pretty simple uh, midterm that you can finish like in half an hour or so. Um, so, but anyway, okay. Um, Let's move on like, with like what we had last time. Um, we finished to talk about, um, oh, actually wait a sec. Like, I, I guess I maybe like, even before I continue with like what we talked about last time, maybe let, let's talk about the last homework uh, because like, it's on, it's have uh uh yeah it, uh, yeah it basically have already like uh it's related to everything that we we have already covered like, so far so for this last homework like I uh basically you 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 want to construct like a network like for the same data set like we had play with like for homework two and three I guess like for all the homeworks I guess more or less the stock data again. Um, again, I, we, we're trying to create a uh, regression model for that one. So for the first part, I, I want you to construct something like a unit model. So um, I will have the data. So basically, uh, if you remember the data, is that you have like uh, 50 other stocks and uh, you try to predict like the micro, Microsoft stock price. So I have start with like, you can think of like, I start with like an input like 50. Uh, and the, with the name some L here, 50 by L. So I will, will just go for like two com flat here. Oh, I didn't specify uh, the, the uh, but it's okay. Like, oh yeah, I specify here. So the com flat here is like three by one. And uh, we, we will just say like, use same pattern. And if you're using carrots, it would be same pattern. If you use PyTorch, the pattern would be one, basically in the sense like, you're not going to change the dimension of the vector here. So I, I let's say if I start with L here, after first comp layer, I still have L, but I have 64 like filters here. So I have like 64, maybe I, I zoom in a bit more. Okay, maybe, maybe like what I'm going to do is I just copy this image here. Like, this probably is easier. So I start with like, because I have 50 stocks or something like 50 by L here, right? So if I do a conflict, just one D conflict, so I have like 64 filters. So I have like 
uh, have 64 of them, like so, so the new dimension is L by 64 here. So let's I pilot another P1 uh, computer. So I have like this is L by 64 again. Now this one I'm going to do a down sample and mass pooling down sample and mass pool here. So this now it becomes like L over two. So for for um simplicity, I guess I you want to like to truncate your input to be a factor of four. Like for example, if you have the input say like have length sixty three, you just truncate to like sixty. Let's say like just remove the uh the last uh three uh columns there or something like. Uh, so um, so I've done sample L over two here. So again, I do the same thing. I have do a filter, but this time like I I have like uh one twenty eight filters here. So I have one twenty eight filter, and I also have two layer, two conflicts with another one twenty eight layer, uh one twenty eight filters. So then I do down sample again. So this would be like L over four now. The the dimension, the length will L over four, and then like uh. We are going to do another like comp filters here, but now he's have two twenty five filters, and this is also two twenty five filters here. Two twenty five, uh, so so not two twenty five, two fifty six. One more thing, two fifty six here. Um, and then I I here like I will do a up confusion, so um, you can just have like a trans. He, that's basically a transpose convolution here uh, that we just mentioned earlier. So we have the filter also like it's like, uh, have a kernel size is like three, with like also a kernel size of three. Here you can you can train that, like so you can train this filter. So this filter is trainable. Um, and uh, you, you're going to up sample sample try to be supposed to be two, so try two. And you want to make the same dimension here as before. This is L over two. So you can use the same padding if you're using Keras. And if, you, if you're if using PyTorch, then probably you need to do some padding and a truncation to make it the same dimension as this one here. So, but anyway, I mean, same dimension as before. So anyway, like after you upsample, like you have now this this one, I, I, I also like this one here, let's see. Yeah, this one here, the up uh, transport convolution only have 60, uh, 128 filters. So here you see the width is 128 here, like, so it's like 128 by L. But I will cascade this one, uh, concatenate this one with like the earlier 128 layer, like on this side here. So I just pad this on this one here. So it become like L by 225, uh, sorry, 256. I don't know why I keep to say 225, 256. And then for this one here, so we do another conf layer, like uh, also like three by one conf layer, uh, but we only 128 filters and do it again. And this one do up convolution just like here and extend to like L now. Basically you have try is again, I try two and uh, and do same pattern. So then again, like this one will be concatenating with this piece here. So we have the identity piece here. And then from here, you can train another conf layer to just get just one column of L, length L. And then this, this is the estimate of your Microsoft Pies. Um, is that clear? So this is like the, a, a unit like a uh, conf layer estimator. Uh, so um and any any question for this one here and and just as usual like you do uh you do uh training with the training data and then test with the test data you want to put the the estimated price uh for both the and also the ground truth like for both the training and testing data, let's like just put it in two separate parts. So, and this this is like one of the part I, like, uh, and I also like include another part like this, like essentially extra credit. You can think of like this part is extra credit as well, like um, either way. So, um, so alternatively, you you may try to implement implement a 
FTM for the same data set. So in this case, I, I will have um, I have like the inputs coming in, like say, so this is like the time assets where you can film this is the time assets here. So you have input, I like have like 50 stocks here. Each time you take like 50 of this, so this will get into your uh, LSTM module here. And uh, maybe I, I, should, I should put like this. I have an X coming in like this. And also I have this hidden unit, like initial hidden value, let's say. And then like this can be LSTM or other book. Oh uh, yeah, let's say LSTM. So and then like this, um, I let's make it two layers. So I have this like output like values for um hidden values. Like, let's say this is like uh, uh let me call it uh H1 here. Let's say I call it H1 here. And I call it this is uh hco tutor let's say so have another lstm layer so then i i have let's move it here Uh, this I uh, going out can be like let's say uh, H1 tutor. Let's say this is a H1 tutor. And then I uh, this H1 tutor can go for another block to get me the estimate. So this is a uh, can be just a linear layer uh, to get me the estimate that that's my y here. Uh, let's say this is x zero and time zero y zero here y y zero here. And then uh, this H1 will get into another block with STM. So this is a, a time step one now, have X1 coming in. I have this is a uh, H2, let's say. And this is a H2 here. I have another LSTM here. And have like H2 tutor. This is H1 tutor here. Oh, wait, this is, sorry. Oh, okay, okay, there's nothing here. Yeah, 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 I'm sorry. So this is uh, give me y, y1 here, let's say. And so on and so forth, like, so you, oh, that, that, that's fine. So, um, so we, we have, So actually, I just see the post, like, but anyway, like I'm saying like this is like, 15 minutes late. You, you post that like 15 minutes ago and 15 minutes late to see your post. Uh, okay. Anyway, so um, yeah, and that, that would be the LSTM structure basically trying to construct. Uh, uh, to be honest, I'm not sure this will work well. Actually, initially I tried it myself. Like it doesn't seem to work very well, but on the other hand, the UNET version actually is work quite well. Uh, is reasonably well, like uh, uh, so. Um, but anyway, like uh, yeah, if if you want to make up some of the uh, uh, anything like for the class, like yeah, that that's you may want to compete both of them, like to get uh, some extra credit. So anyway, that that's the homework. And uh, if you don't have any question, let me continue with like what we had. Um, last time so let me pull up the slides here So we were talking about like our and and um, LSTM and so on, right? So, um, I I guess I here I I would just say show some output like for LSTM here, 
as I mentioned, like, I won't spend as much time as before like talking about uh, recurrent neural networks because like, then other topics like, it seems more interesting. Uh, um, some of the slides here, I'm kind of like basically it's kind of boring from um, the Coursera course like, by Hinton like, in 2012. Uh, so it's a little bit dated, like, but it's like uh, uh, it's still relevant, um, especially in terms of research. Some, sometimes like, some ideas that uh, people like just say like, think that it, I mean, yeah, some ideas just like go in and out. For example, like if you think of like contrastive learning, like it was introduced at least like, for more than a decade. And then now it's like coming back quite, quite a bit because of, because of like um, um, uh, unsupervised learning. Oh, I was sorry, I mean like self-supervised learning. And, um, and uh, we mentioned like long short term memory. So we, in the sense that it, it, it has a box structure like this, but as I mentioned, like you can just consider it as like another like RNN unit because like you can think of, I have the basically just like it's also like getting some hidden values coming in and also like uh, getting some inputs and then I'm trying to uh, update my current hidden values. So, so it's like similar to our and then uh, the only thing is like in terms of implementation that like you will have like more things to initialize. Uh, for example, in, in PyTorch, so if you for the LSTM like you have a separate CMLH you're supposed to initialize. Um, yeah. So but anyway, um, Let's look at some example like for our and like as I mentioned, like, uh, one very kind of apparent application for uh, our NN is to model language. So in this case, I like here let's consider first like character level modeling of language. So we have like model like one character at a time. So um, it's it's kind of interesting like to look at like what kind of results people get. Uh, even though it's a bit dated, like uh, maybe a result like five, uh, five, six years ago, but still it's like quite impressive. So, for example, like um, let me just go directly to some of this example. Like this is a code that like uh, implemented by by Kapafi for his course. Like it's it's like. Our end using no packages at all. Like he just wrote like a Python code using none of the packages. Uh, and of course it's okay. I'm not using LSTM, just our end. Um, and uh, it's, it's quite simple actually. As you can see, I just say uh, one twenty eight uh, one uh, twelve nines of code. I won't go into in depth of this one. I, I would just directly point you to some of the outcome they have. Like this is quite interesting. So he tried to train use, using his RNN model, like so on, of course, like languages, so you take, take um, just a lump of tests, like for example, from, from six, six peer, and then I try to put it in the model and try to train the RNN models. So after he trained sufficiently, uh, you can see like the, the, what, okay, this is what is generated. Like how do they generate the model? Is like something like, okay, you, after you train the RNN for a while, then you have the, um, basically you have the parameters in the RNN model is fixed, right? You know like what's the LSTM, the parameters in the LSTM box and also the RNN box and so on. And then like to actually use that, like you can start with something, give them something, just some, some character to start with. And then like you just like, start with the hidden variable, let's say H is equal to zero. And then when you take this one, let's say, W, you start with like some, some X here, start with W. And then like from here, you can generate the output, right? The output can be some new hidden values here, right? And this new hidden values will kind of, oh, wait a sec. Oh, oh. And also this new hidden value will try to go for another linear layer to regret to some uh, characters, right? So maybe I get character H here. Um, so then I will put the H here, here, back to here. So from this one, okay, the character H, I mean. So, and then I, 
and then you generally hit the new needs again, and then like to get another creditor, and then go back in again. So of course, uh, you you can you you can like, just keep in one character to try to kind of, like fill in like the rest, or like you can pack in like a couple character first. So in that sense, uh, if I I have more inputs coming in, for example, I have the entire sentence coming in, then maybe I will ignore the input here. I will just pack in the H here, right? And I will pack in here for Y here and so on. And after a while, I, I think that the hidden variables are kind of like uh, stabilized. Then I will just stop like putting in any inputs, but I will have the inputs I, here will be just simply as the output generated from the early layer and then feed back to the input. So then with this, like, we can generate any kind of like uh, test like basically we can we have a less generative model and as you can see that like if we train sufficiently we have something like kind of like english here and interestingly you think of like this is say a character based model right it's like a character at a time but it does generate things like pretty nicely like you can see that okay it, it look it looks like english anyway even though like if you look at this more careful like uh some of these words are not words, but of course, if you train more, like you probably get something more, um, kind of like uh, more realistic. But of course, like, this also depends on the training data. So, because here, like the training data is a six six peer, so therefore, like what's coming up, like is also a kind of like poetic, I guess. Um, but um, what he try also, like you can try different things. For example, like. I can put in like the training data can be like some uh, latest source here. If I put in latest source here, then uh, you can generate also some latest source here, so you can compile that. Uh, of course, I guess I you have lots of error. He probably like, managed to remove the errors and make it compile, and uh, and it it it, is, it looks quite impressive. Basically, this is a like, automatically machine generated like uh, map test. Um, and uh, and uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I think this part is interesting. Like it, it knows that like poop can be omitted as well. So um, and uh, people also try to generate sequels. I like can create sequels. Most most likely it won't compile basically, but it looks like sequels. Um, and by the way, I'd like to mention like uh, a modification by Hinton. Uh, that's like, it work like probably like uh, about the same time, but it's a more uh, involved like, so in the sense that they, he also use a character-based model, but in, in his ideas, like, he want to use a factor model in the sense you think of uh, basically uh, have a bunch of factors here uh, in the model. Like I have like more than one factor. I have like a number of factors, maybe like uh, a K factors here. So so, how they they did something like similar to like attention, as you you know like uh, when we talk about attention, like maybe next time or something, um, or yeah, sometimes next week. Um, basically, like what he wants is like, I I need to have a generative model. Right? I have like something coming in, some characters. I trying to estimate what is the character coming out here. That's that's by the way, that's that's a goal again. And I have this hidden unit, so it's I like, keep on updating. And then I, uh, for this one here, like he 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 does not auto uh, immediately train away the character coming out, but instead like he first predict the distribution of the character. So for example, like this is a like, eighty six characters here. So I have input input like it's like just k here. So therefore this is a, a distribution just a delta function here, right? I have k here is a like probability one and the rest is zero. So then I predict something out here. It's like a distribution, maybe I will have something like the next character is likely to be A here or like E here. So I have like high probability of A and E here or whatever. So the goal is like how to generate this distribution here. So he create this factor model to be like this. So he do something matching. You think of like this, uh, many of these factors, for example, like if I, I have like current hidden values here, it's like something. And if I have the pattern is something, if they match together, match well, then that's likely that like I will have 
more likely to have by a distribution to have let's say more likely to have an E here. So therefore, like I will have an output distribution that have a, a high probability of E and the rest would be small, something like that. So then uh, you have many factors. Like what, what they did is like essentially you just do a matching like this match with this guy. So therefore like you do an inner product of like WKF and MUF here. So um, if this value is big, I'm, I'm using this value basically, basically essentially use, use this value to scale the probability distribution of the output. So for factor F, we have an output distribution of equal to VF. So therefore, like if this guy is big, then I will have like more contribution to this factor here. So then I will sum over all the factor basically like this. So they have this theory factors model. It's more complicated, more evolved, but uh, appear to be quite a bit more powerful than the toy models that um, that uh, Kapafio, like the, the one I showed earlier, just like 150 lines there. Um, so, and in terms of optimization for Hinton's work, he used the second order optimization. If you remember when we talk about optimization, most people just use the Newton's method, right? But here, like, uh, it's, he find that it's, more beneficial to use the second order. So we use LBF, uh, LBFGS to optimize that, uh, to find the uh, parameter for, for the factors. And he also used a more complicated conjugate gradient design. So, but I, I'm not going to that. So, um, and this is a kind of like early work, like almost, it's a basically a decade old now. So, but still very impressive. Um, they they use GPUs. I uh, take like a month to do that. Like most likely now, is that uh, you can take much fewer times. But this they they train the entire Wikipedia. It's not like just the um uh, the work from six years, but like with like many samples from Wikipedia. And this is like some of this output here. Uh it's it looks very much like English, right? He was the eleventh president during the Revolution War and gave Opus Paul. Well, my my English is bad. I don't know what's opus for the regime of this cool uh cool 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 of England is now Arab women's icons in and the demons. I don't know why he's saying that use something between the character sisters in lower coil trains were always operated in the line of the Euphemia Street respectively. Um, you you can see it doesn't make quite much sense, but Remember, this is a it's a character based model, so um, um, it's interesting. Okay, I'm, I'm the graphic of interesting. Like you have the back here, and what's surprising is like, as you can see, like they the model itself know how to close the bracket. For example, if start the bracket somewhere, it close it. Here, it didn't show the bracket like opening bracket here. I um, it, it also create words that looks like words. For example, like this, you farmable. It sounds and looks very much like a word, but word. But if you uh, try to take it up on a, in a dictionary, then you will find that it's not actually a word. Um, and uh, and also like, even though it's a character-based model, it looks like the model itself knows some kind of grammar. For example, like if you look at this one, uh, Sheila like funks. So it it will kind of like know how to put. I mean, know how to put the S here because they think okay, this is a uh, kind of like it's a person, uh, a foot, uh, how do you call that? Like if foot person I should have like uh, a match with the grammar, I should put the S here. So if I put people here, I know to omit the S here. And on the other hand, if I have a comma here, he know to fill in this kind of stuff. It, it sounds like this like a name, so therefore he's trying to fill in something like, sounds like a name here. Um, and then like there's something like the meaning of life is literary recognition and so on, something like that. And this is I like, trying to make something like interesting, like uh that's uh okay, I'm 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 not going to that. Like so um and as I mentioned, this is a decade old model and it says also character based. Now this most models are actually word based, we'll get into that like next time. Um uh, and uh, but even though it's character based, it looks like it knows lots of words. 
and also like you know proper names like days like numbers and uh, and as i mentioned you know to balance calls and also balance backers so if you start with like backers it, it it will close it appropriately so it can count the number of backers basically how much how much how many backers you have open and so on um so yeah it's very hard to judge like what what kind of syntax the the model actually knows uh and it knows kind of like some semantic, even not just syntactic, but a semantic association as well. For example, like it, it knows that Plato is supposed to be associated with Wittgenstein, and, and cabbage is supposed to associate it with like vegetable. Um, and uh, okay, by the way, like this is just a data work, but you can see that this is one application of our NN. So of course, I uh, nowadays people probably this is not the state of the art, like people not using this, like probably they will use attention model instead of data uh, for image captioning. But the idea like for this application here is like, I have an image, I try to caption the image. So for example, like this will give, uh, give me a uh, caption, a straw hat, let's say. And um, how they do that is like, they combine a CNN model with a RN model. So we start with some CNN and extract some kind of features and use the output of the CNN I plug into as the hidden variable basically. And then I, uh, for the LNN here, it's just trying to generate uh, words here. So it start with something like just put a start here with a hidden variables, then trying to like spell out, okay, what's the next word? And then this next word will put into here. And then like you get, this one and here and so on. Eventually, get n will just stop. So you can train the entire thing end to end, basically, right? So you have, uh, uh, of course, uh, you you can do like this uh, transfer learning. Like you, you don't need to really train end to end. You yeah, at least like for the CNN part, you can just take. Uh, for example, this is just uh, Alex lag lag here. We can just use the Alex lag and take the uh, last layer, second last layer, and match the features I plug into here. And then using a simple RNN here, not even an LSTM. So we generate this why not here, and then I plug into this one here. So, okay, yeah, here, like what it does uh, is uh, like in what I'm describing for the hinting case, like it doesn't uh, immediately generate the character itself, but it's generated the distribution. Actually, Honestly, it's more common like, in doing that anyway. Um, you may train the model to generate the word directly, but oftentimes it's more, ex especially for the character-based model, it's better to just generate the uh, word, uh, the distribution is that. So for, for example, I have 80 characters or 86 character, I generate the distribution of this 86 character. After I generate that, I'm going to sample from this distribution and once I sample, then maybe I sample the straw here, then I plug into the uh, to the like uh, uh, plug, plug in back into the uh, RNN. So then I have straw and generate hat and so on, and then end. So I just, when I sample end token, then it finish. So for this application, like people usually use this Coco, like Microsoft Coco, like uh, data set to train that. They they have like lots of images, like, and I guess it's, this is like, okay, really outdated, like several years old. So it still have like much more, um, many more like number of images. Um, and also like for each of the image, they have these sentences, like the caption of this uh, image. So for example, look, for this image here, they have like a man riding a bike bike uh, on the dirt path uh, full of forest. And uh, there's a mountain biker pumps uh, his fist uh, in salvation. Um, okay, and so on and so forth. Now it's trying to predict this thing, right? So you have the image again, and you, you get the CNN features, you can use Wesley, you, say, you can use Alex, you can use UGG lab. Then you can just train the the RNN or train the uh, LSTM. So this is like to generate the captions. Uh, this is like some example output. Uh, 
for example, like this man in black shirt is playing guitar. So it's like very nice. If you look at this here, right? This is like actually doing, even though this is a data work, work, work now, it's maybe like a couple years old, uh, still like it's like uh, quite impressive. So even though like also like they, they have like some wrong uh, caption result as well. So for example, this young boy is, uh, this is more like baby, a young boy, but it's okay. Managed to think he's a boy. Yeah, I think it's also like looks like a boy. A young boy is holding a baseball hat, baseball bat, and this is a, a cat. Okay, it doesn't recognize this correctly. Sitting on a couch, so it's also like we have a remote. It's hard to say. I can't imagine it should be on a couch, but you cannot see a couch. Remote control. Uh, it looks very much like remote control. Yeah, I think it's really a remote control. Eh? Or, or a phone. Yeah, I think it's a remote control. Yeah, that's right. And there's a woman holding a teddy bear. I don't know where the teddy bear is coming from, in front of the mirror. A uh, horse is standing in the middle of the road. So this is uh, kind of interesting. You don't know where is the horse. Uh, but yeah. Okay, I guess that, that that's, that's it. I, I, I don't want to spend time talking about uh, Echo State Network, I used to spend time on that. Uh, but I'm thinking like if I don't, then I, I let's see, I, I've, I've 15 minutes or so, 20 minutes. Um, Uh, I, I'm I'm not sure it's like good to start with the uh, what to what and uh, uh, okay maybe maybe I I, I still like uh, yeah but I I didn't prepare for that because I I was thinking I'm not going to talk about that uh, but this thing is rather simple yeah I uh. I, I, okay, I guess maybe I just say a few words about that. So th this is like another kind of, uh, so because our energy is hard to train, hard to train. So um, Hinton's I uh, previously mentioned several ways to train it. Like one is like, uh, of course nowadays like you, um, you, you uh, with LSTM and with like, uh, better way to initialize weight and so on. You you can train a bit better. So, but another alternative, like you have some kind of um, recurrent lateral work, kind of like in the sense that it's a have a, a time dependent uh, model. So basically, like you have the or like I should say long memory less model. Um, it's using this kind of like echo state laterals. So the echo state laterals is a, a very simple uh, model, or, or at, least, at least I should say like computational wise, it's a very, com um, um, very light computational model. So basically we, we have like, uh, kind of like maybe if this picture is good to illustrate. So, we, we, we have like something, a dynamical reservoir somehow. This will do, doing lots of dynamical, like kind of, you see like what we, we have here is that like, we have like different states and then we have states moving around. So like you can imagine like this, this is like a dynamical model so you have like one state moving to another state and so on moving other states. And each of this move, motion of these states here will, will correspond to um some uh output basically so some kind of signal so each of these will correspond to signal so you can think of like okay i have like if i i start with here that I, then i will have some dynamic behavior of like this guy maybe if i start from here uh i will have some dynamic behavior of this guy so and, and then i let's say if i have some input and um, I want to train a model to have like certain dynamic behavior. For example, like in this example here, I want to train a uh, frequency generator, as you can see. So 
I have like this given like different frequency here, frequency is here. So I have like uh, lower frequency for this uh, this period of time. So for this period of time, so and then I increase the frequency to this one here, and then I drop the frequency here for this period of time, and I increase the frequency like this. So then the desired output will be something like that, right? So within this time step here, I will be oscillating at this frequency now. At this period, I increase the frequency, right? So I oscillate faster. Now here, like I decrease the frequency, I'll say oscillating less. And then this one, I increase even further, I oscillate more. So I, I want to generate a model to do that. Like put in any input, I have a frequency generator. For example, I have something like this. So, and uh, oh, oh, oh. of course I can generate out and then to train that, for example, this is an input. I train it out and then to generate something like that. But in this case, using this echo state network, it's like, um, it's more kind of, uh, uh, yeah, at least computational wise, it's it's it's, it's like much easier to train. So, as my mentioned, like, the echo state library basically contain this here. I have a West sofa. If you think of like in this West sofa, like you start from anywhere here, it will have some kind of dynamic behavior. For example, this one will have dynamic behavior like this, and this one have dynamic behavior like this, and so on and so forth. So. What we are going to do is say, we are not going to train this dynamic, dynamic West of her. So this dynamic West of her is say, uh, it's fixed. So we, we are going to generate that by random. So we have like something like random model here. So this is a random uh, memory model. So it will like given some input here, you're going to uh, get, get the corresponding dynamic behavior. So what we are going to train is simply training uh, Given an input, like what should I connect connect to this like, dynamical reservoir? So um, let's see if I have a sl slide for that. Oh, I, actually, I, I'm not quite right, but the idea is, is correct. So I, uh, so basically, like I'm going to fix the what's the connection here, like inside the uh, basically inside the so far, it will be like how the hidden layers, hidden units are connecting to the hidden units, right? I I don't I don't call okay the connection there. So in the sense, I just like start from random and generate that and also like i don't care even the input connection here so how the input is connecting the hidden layers so in the sense that like, what you can imagine is something like um, sketch somewhere yeah it's okay Yeah, I try to look for a picture back. Uh, yeah, maybe maybe even any of this layer is good. Maybe just this one, maybe we used this before. Right? So what we mean is like, we kind of like uh, fix this one here, basically for this part, like everything is fake, the parameter for this part is fixed. So therefore like given the input here, I'm also given the hidden layers here, uh, how this one is going to generate the next one here, this one, I'm, I'm not going to train it. So I will just start with something random. So in the sense, I just only to train this layer. So, but of course to make it work, then I should initialize this more lightly. So this this part here, if like, I, I, I need to make sure that like, uh, they, um, they they have like different variation. For example, like if I, I have the out, uh, what should I say? Mm. Yeah, okay, okay, I guess I, I won't go into that. I guess that's that's fine. I guess I, that's, uh, 
So that that's the basically the echo state lateral idea. I say I am going to fix this part, but I am trying to initialize it more nicely, and then I only train this part. So therefore, like it will be much easier to train, and that that. If we train appropriately, we will get something as I we mentioned earlier. So we can train a pretty nice uh, generator. This is a uh, the ground. I think this is a, a ground truth, and also the uh, the result. I guess. Um, a sec. I yeah. I, I, this doesn't match though. Like uh, hmm. so. But anyway. And uh, okay, I guess I maybe just get to this summary slide here, so you can see like. When we do our NN, we can have different combinations of using our NN. We can like say, okay, I do a one to one here. For example, like I have one input coming in and one input coming out. For example, you can imagine if I do a uh, kind of addition uh, uh, of like multiple digits. So each time I input one digit, I have one digit coming out. So I can have the one to one models. And I can have a one to many models, I say I have. For example, for image captioning, I get the features I coming putting in the input here. Then it will just generate uh, many kind of, uh, characters or the many words. The entire face coming out, or I can do a many to one. So I can have like say a for example like a sentiment classification. I have like a um, a sentence that I put in one word at a time. Then it's just generate the sentiment. So to classify whether uh, the sentence is positive or negative. So, or I can do a many to many. So I, I can have a sentence coming in, let's say, and translate into another language. So let's say I can have English coming in and then translate to Spanish, let's say. Um, and typically for one trick here, like if we do translation, for example, I, I, uh, my, I, uh, I speak Spanish. Like, yeah. So I, I should translate something like what well, El Abo Ablo Espanol or something like that, right? Uh, I don't know whether it's like spelled like this. Then uh know that like typically one trick is that like it's it's better to flip this sentence with training. So, for example, if you train a sentence, um, you want to first, like, uh, um, or, or like you may flip the input here. For example, like I flip it to Spanish, speak I, then I also kind of like output that I upload Espanol. And uh, so, in the sense that you, you want to, First, I try to um, extract the, the uh, words that is closest say, to the current time, and then and so on and so forth. But anyway, like this, this is like some, yeah, the, okay, this is some trick, like maybe useful in other application, but in terms of like machine translation nowadays, like uh, it's already like, if you know how to play the bird or like, GPT-3 and so on, like they, they all move to transformer models now. As I mentioned, they, this moved so quickly, like only a couple of years ago, like uh, kind of NLP, uh, I mean, the uh, recurrent neural network is really the state of, was really the state of the art. And, uh, and also we can do many to many, for example, like I can have video frames coming in, a like video, just I have like different frames coming in. And then I, I want to classify in the frame level, let's say, for example, like, I want I want to classify like for a frame. Oh, for example, like, I I want to classify just say like, whether uh, in inside video whether like anything is interesting. Right, we can put into a video stream here, and for each of the video frame here, I can just go for a for example WestNet or like a uh, AlexNet, and then I get into features I put into this one here, right, and then like I can train it out and just to say. Okay, any of this will be interesting. For example, like uh, I can, for example, I, I can train to have uh, uh, event detection. For example, like it's a very quiet pace, and uh, 
there's sometimes I have a event, maybe like uh, try to detect that there's any, any like uh, uh, any criminal behavior, like uh, any crime is going to this kind of stuff that so you can imagine that there's lots of like applications that you can play with as long as uh, you, you have the data. And of course, the tricky part is that you need to also label the data as well. So you need to, uh, for the training, you need to decide, okay, who, which frame is actually correspond to some of the events that I'm interested in, which one is not. So uh, a conclusion of like our NN and so on. So, uh, and uh, you can see like the model itself is quite flexible, especially if you have the time access to think of like, for example, like if you just like in our in our homework there, so we have prediction of uh, stock price. Apparently we have the time access here, right? And the time, along the time access, like data should be correlated. So therefore like using our NN seems to make sense. And, um, and our NN by itself is very easy to implement. I, I show you that like, even I don't show line by line, so you can like write from scratch uh, our NN using like uh, 200, less than 200 lines of code, like Python code. Uh, but uh, vanilla our NN typically does not work too well in many applications because um, you have this memory problem that like you cannot memorize stuff that's long time ago. So therefore, like, also we mentioned non short term memory, trying to extend your short term memory a bit longer by introducing this gaze, like uh, uh, this, uh, if you remember, there's different gates here. When you have some gate open, you're going to read into the memory and write into memories. Otherwise, you're not going to do that. And there's also variation, for example, GLU. We didn't get into that, but uh, if you're using like all these packages, like, all these are already available in the standard packages. And uh, we don't talk about too much of a training. So, because if you just imagine, like, if you do an RNN, it's a like really bad pop over time. Training is not much different from training a deep neural network. So then, of course, like if you're a deep neural network, you have all these problems like, like gradient vanishing and also exploding. That's, that's, you expect it. Um, and uh, exploding, you can reduce by clipping that. Uh, and, uh, and vanishing is partially mitigated when using like something like LSTM. Um, and this I can't really not get into that, like, but from Hinton's work there, like, he tried to use Hessen free, or um, well, when I say Hessen free methods, it's like, uh, really, really like second order, second order method, but like Hessen free is meaning just saying like not computing the Hessen, but instead like use, using LB free, um, LBFGS. If you remember, like it's like said, Many lectures ago, we talked about the second order method. Uh, if you try to compute the Hessian, Hessian is very expensive, right? Because we need to do the inversion. Matrix inversion is like, um, is like uh, of the capacity like of M cube. It can be expensive like for high, high dimension. So therefore like, what we can do is that we, we can update the Hessian just like by Basically, just some by some approximation step. So we're not completely exact compute that exactly, but using some approximation step to keep updating the hashing. So that that um, and with with that we can use second order methods. For some of these applications, it's actually better. At least like for Hinton's case, uh, he did see improvement when he used like uh, LBFGS and so on. And we can't like mention echo state network like, very briefly because, um, yeah, for kind of like for model, yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, it's okay. I have one minute. I guess I'm not going to do that. Or, or uh, uh, yeah, it's okay. I, I didn't plan to talk about echo state network anyway. So I have the code online. I think uh, it's still on the website. So if you, uh, if you're interested, you can take a look of the code as well for the echo state lab rules. But the idea is like simply like you are not going to train the entire RNN model. So in the sense that like you, you, you can more or less just train the last layer. So because like you, you have the RNN 
include include uh, how you update how you update your hidden variables right but also like you know, how you update the inter hidden variables so this part here but also like how you're going to use this to generate your output right so in the sense like for our uh, echo state letters we are not going to train this part more or less we only just train this part here so therefore it become much easier so okay i guess i i i'm good at time so uh after talking about echo state letters so next time we start something new um we'll talk about uh attention model but we'll start talk about like what to what um uh, and then I will talk about attention models. So, okay. Uh, if, if you guys don't have any questions, then I will just stop here now. So I'll see you guys next, next week.